In this video we are checking out the FNERSI DWS200 soldering station. I do hope I pronounced this correctly. Now of course we need something to solder and look at that. A while ago Sudako sent me this solder kit of the MIDI through box. Perfect for those of us who have a MIDI tower and want everything connected all of the time. Now there's a little story to the soldering station. I did have my eyes on it for quite some time. So far I've been using a very basic soldering iron and many of you in past videos recommended me to get a soldering station with PID and more power to keep the temperatures stable. I tried getting a sample through Banggood but they didn't have any stock so when Fnersi reached out to me directly, well, I jumped on the opportunity. Disclosure, the soldering station and the MIDI through box solder kit were sent to me for free and I do get to keep them. I also want to thank PCBWay, our long-term channel sponsor. It's your one-stop shop for printed circuit boards, manufacturing and assembly, but also CNC machining, 3D printing and much more. Check the video description for links and more information. Let's have a look what's inside the box. Here we can see the main soldering station. It is fully digital with a nice 2.8 inch LCD screen and it is compatible with mains power from 100 to 240 volts protected with a fuse. There is a mechanical power switch at the back as well as a soft touch power button at the front. It can deliver a whopping 200 watts of power to keep the temperature stable and it heats up really fast. After just a few seconds, we are good to go. There are three temperature presets that you can of course adjust and on the display it shows you all the important information, the current temperature, how much power it is using and you can also display a graph of the temperature over time. There are all sorts of settings. You can adjust the temperatures for the presets. You can toggle between Fahrenheit and Celsius. You can adjust the sleep mode and you can also calibrate the temperature with the right equipment. You can reset all the settings to factory default and even update the firmware. My unit came with version 1.2, but on the website you can get firstly a PDF manual and then I can see there's a version 1.3. So of course I connected the USB-C port to my computer and upgraded to the new firmware. And here we have the stand for the soldering iron. It connects with a cable to the main base station to enable hibernating the soldering iron when you put it down. So this will lower the temperature to 100 degrees looking after the iron tips. The soldering station is compatible with two handle types F210 and F245. I received a fully decked out kit with both handles and a nice assortment of tips. My understanding is that the F210 is for more detailed finer work and the F 245 is for when you need more power. Here we can see both handles on the screen and you can see that the F245 handle is a little bit larger in terms of uh, the grip size and the tips at the front. There are three tips that are included for the F210 handle. We have K, I and IS and here we can see what those three tips look like. And now let's have a look at the tips for the F245 handle. We're getting six tips in total. Here are the first three. We have a C2, KU and JS and this is what they look like. And then we're getting another three tips labeled B, K and I. For today's soldering, I went with the F245 handle and at first I used the pointy B tip. Soldering small stuff like the uh, data pins for the USB port, well, this tip worked just fine. It seems to be just the right size, but for the larger ground pins and the MIDI DIN ports, well, not so much. The thermal mass isn't that good and I struggled getting the solder to flow. And changing tips, well, this is where this soldering station is really 
nifty because you can change tips while you are working without stopping what you're doing. The holder has some holes to help you remove the hot tip. And on both the base station as well as the holder, you can store tips at the top. So you can just take the empty handle and insert a new tip on the fly, ready to go. After switching to the KU tip, this one looks like a chisel. It has a much larger thermal mass. The solder was now flowing much better with those larger ground pins and those larger pins for the MIDI DIN ports. Also, what I found very nice is some uh, audio feedback. So when you take the handle from the holder, it starts heating up the tip taking just a few seconds and then you can hear a loud beep so without looking at the screen you know exactly when it's ready to go again. What else is there? The holder came with a wire clip hook which keeps the wire out of the way and also in the box was a pair of helping hands. They attach to the side of the base station letting you hold small PCBs. There's also a steel wire cleaning pad to keep the tips nice and clean. So the soldering went quite well. I haven't soldered in quite a while. So the first solder joints, they were a little bit shaky, but after that it was pretty much smooth sailing. And here you can see me assemble the MIDI through box after the soldering. And yeah, so what do I think of the Fnersi DWS 200 soldering station? I like it. I like it a lot. The actual soldering, well, it doesn't really feel that much different to before with my very basic soldering iron, but it's the other aspects of working that make the difference. No need to wait for the iron to heat up and you're not quite sure if it's reached the temperature. Within around three seconds, you are good to go. I really like how it hibernates when you put the handle into the holder and changing tips is very easy. Just use the tip removal holes on the holder, insert the next tip and off you go. The huge 200 watts of power wasn't really required today, but if you're soldering on a multi-layer PCB board with large ground planes, then this is where all this power will come in handy. I did have a look at prices and do keep in mind, prices can be different in the regions and it also depends on what kit you choose with the different handle types and tips and so on. Now, at the time of making this video, the full kit with both handles and nine tips, which is what I'm showcasing here, was selling for 148 USD. And if you're after just the base configuration with a single handle type in a single tip, you're looking at 108 USD. Of course, price is always subject to change. So have a look in the video description for up-to-date prices. In terms of improvement, I really didn't notice anything off with this device today. The chisel tip uh, needs a little bit of getting used to. I would prefer a tip that is straight at the front, just like my previous soldering, uh, soldering iron. So I will definitely have a look out for some replacement tips. And yeah, this is my first soldering with this product. It worked really smooth and I'm looking forward to using it again in the future. If you have any specific questions, don't hesitate, leave them down below. And that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching and all the support on the channel. And I shall see you soon with another one.